so much for your your response and down David. The Lord bless you. Am I being heard at the back? Okay. This is message number two of my Christmas series. Jesus Emmanuel. What does Jesus mean? The name Jesus. It means the Savior. And what does the name Emmanuel mean? God with us or among us. Praise God. The Son of God, the Lord Jesus, has basically two names. They are Jesus and Emmanuel. The other names are, in fact, titles. Last Sunday, our focus was on the two names. The first, Emmanuel. The second, Jesus. This morning, our attention is on the four titles, which our leader read for us, recorded in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, which reads as follows. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. What title? Notice that when Isaiah introduces these four names or titles, he uses the singular. He doesn't say names. He says, he shall be called, or he shall be the name. And then he repeats, for. So here we have a fourfold name, or title, of the Son of God. This fourfold title clearly declares that Jesus is the king, the royal descendant of King David and of his great kingdom. That's the topic of chapter 7, which we won't get to today, but we'll look at verse 6. Each of these four designations of Jesus are related to his position as king. And we refer to them as throne titles. A king or a queen sits on a throne. So these four titles all relate to the throne of the kingdom of God. We refer to them as throne titles of the Messiah or the Christ. To us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulder. The government of what? The government of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. This is the responsibility of King Jesus. In Psalm 2, we read of the kings and the rulers of the earth who were standing together against God the Lord. And in verse 6, God speaks, and he says this, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy hill. This is God the Father speaking about who? About Jesus. I have installed my king on Zion, on holy hill. The name Zion. Excuse me. Hello? Are you still with me? 
Thank you. Thank you. Now maybe I can relax a little and speak in a normal voice. Hopefully I'll survive. The time is running away, so I need to keep going. We need to be finished by 10. The names Zion and Holy Hill are Hebrew names for heaven. That's why they use them here in Psalm 2. So God the Father is here declaring that God the Son, the Lord Jesus, is his appointed king in heaven. In Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, we read the story of wise men who came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is he who has been born, what? King of the Jews. Many people think there were three wise men because there were three gifts. The Bible doesn't tell us there were three. There may have been five. There may have been seven. We don't know. But wise men came from the east. And they said, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? Why? Because we have seen his star in the east and we have come to worship him. Have you been worshiping Jesus this past Christmas? I hope so. The first title, Wonderful Counselor, could also read Wonderful Ruler or Wonderful King. When we enter the kingdom of God, we come under the rule or the authority of King Jesus. And we can receive his wise counsel as we read his book, the Bible. Jesus is the wonderful counselor to all who really trust in him and desire to obey his words and his teaching. But you won't find the counsel of God in a newspaper or in a fashion magazine. You need to read and read and read the Word of God. Do you need counsel from the King? Then seek him in prayer and read his holy word, the Bible. The second title is Mighty God or Lord God Almighty. And the third title is Everlasting or Eternal Father. We'll consider these two very briefly together as they are interrelated. I would need about an hour to share each title properly, but I don't have that time this morning. In John chapter 14, verses 7 to 13, the Lord Jesus teaches us very clearly that the Father dwells in him. He says this, If you had known me, you would also have known my Father. From now on you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. That is all we ask. Now listen to Jesus' reply. Have I been so long with you all, and yet you do not recognize me yet? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say then, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? What I am telling you, I do not say on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me continually, he does the works, that is, his own miraculous deeds of divine power. So God the Father was speaking through and using the body, the physical body of the Lord Jesus Christ to do his work. 
What does this mean for you and me today? All of God's words and working which demonstrate his awesome divine power come to us in and through the Lord Jesus. Therefore, if we fail to trust and obey the Lord Jesus Christ, we fail to trust and obey God, our Heavenly Father. Who cares for all those who trust and obey him? And in Matthew 28, verse 18, Jesus says, All authority and all power to rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. You and I are accountable to the Lord Jesus Christ, for he is the mighty God, the eternal Father. We should therefore trust him and obey him each day of our lives. And finally, the fourth title is this, Prince of Peace or Kingdom Administrator. This title not only tells us clearly who Jesus is, but two important activities of his ministry or working. The first activity as Prince of Peace is providing reconciliation to God for any sinner who truly repents and turns away from their life and from their attitude of rebellion to God. And having turned away from rebellion, they trust in him as their personal savior. That's the first activity, reconciliation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 explains for us in detail, but I don't have time this morning. God was in Christ reconciling the world of people unto himself. Thus we can enjoy peace with God. Hallelujah. The same can be true of our relationship with people. Do you have anyone in your life with whom you're having a very difficult time and you don't have much of a relationship? Brothers and sisters, this morning, if you're really trusting Jesus and following him and obeying his word, before the end of today, reconcile with that brother or with that sister and bring peace into your relationship. The second activity is recorded in John chapter 16, verse 33 where Jesus says, I have said these things to you so that in me you might have peace in your hearts. In the world you shall have troubles and trials, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. My peace I leave with you, John 14. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives. This is special peace. Why? For he is the prince of peace. If you are trusting him this morning, you will have peace in your heart between yourself and God the Father and between brothers and sisters. Let's pray. Our loving Father, we thank you for Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you for coming into this world in obedience to your Father's will and providing all that is necessary for us 
to have a relationship with you and a wonderful relationship with one another, dwelling in peace and in love and in power and in joy. May this be true for each one of us throughout this coming week and throughout the coming year. In Jesus' name, amen.